Hi, this is Russ here from Sparks Hockey with another episode of The Edge. Uh, we're doing something really exciting this week. We are talking with Hal Gill, former NHL player, played 1,100 games in the big leagues, played for the Bruins, the Leafs, the Penguins, the Canadians, the Predators, and the Flyers. So lots of different teams. Uh, he is from right in our area here in Massachusetts. So it was, it was really nice to have him agree to stop by and have a little conversation with us. Um, so we'll kick it off with uh, some questions about the Stanley Cup playoffs that just happened. Did you have any predictions this season going in before, before it all kind of evolved? Yeah, I, I had a lot of predictions. Um, actually, I, I did like Pittsburgh. I thought they're a quality team with a lot of depth. Yeah. Um, I did like Nashville being from Nashville. So um, I didn't see them as going that far, but they were pretty impressive. Um, but what a, ser- what a whole s- series was great. Um, from the first round all the way through was was fun to watch. I think it was great for the game, especially to have Nashville in and everyone could see the size of that market and how awesome that is. Um, and it's growing every day. So um, yeah, I don't have any big predictions because I think there's so much that goes on. You look at all the injuries that and different things that teams have to go through. And that's what makes the Stanley Cup playoffs so much fun is all the adversity that you have to overcome. And, and uh, congrats to the Penguins for doing just that and, and getting through. Uh, losing their best defenseman, uh, losing a lot of defensemen, and and finding a way to, to win yeah. is pretty impressive. What uh, is there an aspect to the Penguins that just makes them such a competitor? Like year after year, they just manage to kind of make it that far. Well, I think it comes from the whole organization, uh, Mario Lemieux, obviously, all the way down. I think the whole mentality is next guy up, and they bring in these young guys and just let them play and. Yeah. Uh, they've been pretty good at bringing in the right kind of player that uh, allows them to use their speed, use their skill. They're fast through the neutral zone and they're committed to that. And let's be honest, it doesn't hurt having Crosby and Malkin. <laughs> I mean, yeah. these guys are elite level and, and to have a two-headed monster like that on a team is, is tough to play against. So, um, But <clears throat> I was so happy to see Marc-Andre Fleury play so well um, and then to have Murray come in and yeah. and play great. There's not too many teams that can have that. If you lose your starting goalie, you usually lose out. And uh, and they powered right through. And uh, that's I think that's a whole mentality of, of creating depth on a team. Yeah. Um, before we switch gears to, an, to another team in the NHL, so you did bring by your Stanley Cup ranks. So yeah. Hal did win a cup in 09, right? 09, yeah, with Pittsburgh. And um, I don't wear it all that often, but I figured I'd bring it by for you guys. We'll probably zoom in and show a, so show a closer picture to this, uh, of this ring here. On the inside it says, you hungry. What's that, what's that a reference to? Just, just our team mentality, asking each other if we were hungry, if we wanted it, and uh, calling each other out, and, and uh, you hungry? That's, that's what it was all about. Nice, and then it says here, the pens in your hand. Yeah, a little play on words there, the penguins and the pens, and um, when Michelle Therrien was let go and Dan Bosma came in, he said that, you know, we have a blank sheet of paper to write our story, and nice. what are we going to write? The pen's in our hand, so. Very nice. Uh, and just so everyone can see, like, on House, on House, everyone may or may not know House 6, 7, um, so it looks somewhat normal on your hand and you can wear it out, but when you, when you kind of put it on like a normal <laughs> person's hand, this ring would be totally non-functional for me. Um, but uh, this is great, so thanks so much for bringing it by. Yeah, it's, it's happy to. Um, so switching gears over to Nashville, we were all wondering, and you know, every the whole country, I think there's a lot of people rooting for the Predators just because they're, they're such a, a unique franchise in, in the NHL market. Um, what was it like playing for the Predators uh, back back when you were playing there, which wasn't too long ago, um, compared to, you, you got to play for some of the original six teams. So what, what yeah. are those two markets like? Well, it was, it was a small market. It wasn't the booming thing that you're seeing now on TV with Broadway shut down so that they can have 100,000 people there. Yeah. Um, but it, what, it you know, really was a good market. It, you know, For 17,000 people going crazy when I was there, it was a lot of fun. It was a rowdy crowd. Maybe not always the most informed crowd, yeah. uh, but you know, going down south, you don't expect them to be uh, that passionate about it. Maybe not informed, but now they are, yeah. and they're and they're as passionate as could be. They get 
uh, they do this thing where it's like a, a ovation during a TV timeout and the place goes nuts for no really no reason and it always got you going I, on the ice it was like this big boost this adrenaline kick And uh, they're really good at that, and they, they show their passion, and you can see the whole city was overcome with, with Stanley Cup fever. Totally. And that was, uh, that was fun to watch. It was really, really cool to see, especially being there when it wasn't that big and seeing how much these guys really worked hard for it, and David Poyle and the whole crew, uh, they've been there forever, and finally see it make it work. Yeah. Um, I guess they're that close to getting it, but I, I don't think they're going anyway, uh, anywhere anytime soon. I think they're going to be in the hunt for many years to come. Yeah, it's fun to see the the chance that you often see, like in, in the Boston college hockey scene. Yeah, yeah. Like the the the, the heckling of the goalies yeah. going on at the NHL level. You don't always see that in the NHL teams. Yeah, uh, it's that, it's a great atmosphere and um, the coordinated chance and all that stuff is uh, it's a ton of fun. Yeah. So you've made a switch, you know. Now that you're now that you're not playing, you're a couple of years out. You're now coaching. Um, is there anything like? Is there anything that you're doing as a coach that you think you're exposing your kids to that maybe you weren't exposed to coming up where you didn't have like someone with that experience? Uh, I that's a that's a good question because there's a lot of things that are going on in kids' lives these days. There's a lot of pressures that I didn't have. Um, when I was in high school, I just played hockey and football and baseball because it was fun. Yeah. Um, now it's like, what league are you in? Where are you going to be? Is this the best? Uh, is that optimal for your development and going to the next level? There's a lot of outside pressures put on it. So I think my coaching style is, I call it a happy bubble where I, I have all my boys in the room. We get out on the ice and there's nothing else to worry about. We're just playing hockey. Yeah. And it's not about, um, you know, this or that. It's it's about having fun, being with your friends, working hard, working as a team. Um, and, you know, for the most part, I don't care if it's you block one shot during a game or you score the biggest goal. Mm -hmm. You still mean the same thing to this team. Yeah. And it's about going out and being that good teammate. And I think that's... What I probably stress the most is just be a good teammate and, and play and have fun. Is there anything like you, you kind of made reference to? You know, today the 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 amount of stress and the amount that we're driving these kids and all the the club teams and the elite yeah. tournaments. Is there anything on both sides? Is there anything that you see that's happening today in the raising of a hockey player that you think is fantastic and people should should keep keep at it? Like it's great. It's great that this has evolved. There's so there's so many qualified coaches, um, camps. There's so many things that kids can do that are great. The problem I see, and, and I don't think that was available back when I was growing up. I think there was, you know, people just kind of having fun, but now you're really getting focus, skill development, edge work, uh, stick work, defense camps, offense camps. Um, so there's so many NHL treatment. So, yeah, at a, at a, all the way, all the way up. Now the problem lies where I think kids are just burnt out from hockey. I think there's, um, and after coaching high school, I found that the 
best athletes are, are the lacrosse players that go and play lacrosse and come back. Mm-hmm. They're the soccer players that play soccer. And I think really they are. Like they come back and they're the best the athletes. They're yeah. the best athletes. I think they've become well rounded. They know. I, and let's face it, you can go and play shinny hockey in the summer. You're never going to get that compete level that you're going to get playing in a lacrosse state championship. And that's what it's all about. That's what sports is all about, is that compete level and finding it and finding more. Just when you think you can't give any more, you find a way to get it. And that's the reward of, of sport, is doing more than you ever have done. I, don't, I just don't think you can find that in a summer camp. Yeah. So uh, those kids that go and play, play other sports, learn different ways of playing. Play yeah. basketball. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Yeah. Golf, even. You know, if you're standing over a five foot putt and you gotta make it, <laughs> and you're handling stress that you've never handled before. Yeah. So to be able to handle that is the best thing for you as an athlete. Now, as a hockey player, you have to try and s- separate those and merge those two together. Be a great athlete and be a great hockey player. Yeah. Sometimes they're, they're not the same thing, but you have to try to make them work with each other. I wonder if parents, you know, I'm a parent of a 13 year old and I wonder if you hear that coming from elite athletes that have played at a high level, like, oh yeah, you should go play all these different sports, and you're like, yeah, he doesn't mean that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's, like yeah. yeah, we're gonna still be behind that other kid that's playing all summer long. Yeah. But you truly do, I mean. Well, that's the it. problem is, is you know, you do have a tryout a year before your kid to get, and, and you've all seen it, you've seen it with a 13 year old. That's, that year is a huge move. Yeah. They've developed as a human, developed as, a player, they're different people. Uh, and so, yeah, you have to say, okay, if I get him in the camp and let him play three weeks before that tryout, he's gonna be better. Yeah. Is he gonna be better in the long run? And that's the that's the balance. Because you want him to be able to make the team. Sure. So that's the balance between being a good hockey player and a good athlete. And you know, if he doesn't make the team, then well, you kind of squash his dreams, uh, but I don't know. It's hard. It's hard raising kids these days. I think, and and you want to give them the best, but in the end, it's got to be fun. And if it's not fun, then it's not worth it. Easy for me to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was was there ever? I always wondered this, like, because there wasn't a light bulb moment for me as an athlete. Was there ever like a light bulb moment when you were growing up playing, where you, where some coach or or some event happened in your? Well, stick to hockey, where you, like some technique or some way to play the game or some vision or something was like, wow, I hadn't thought of that and now it's changed the way I play. Um, I will say, and it was, I think the light bulb moment for me was, the biggest one was somewhere, my maybe my fourth or fifth year, where I, in the NHL, where I felt like I was established in, in the NHL, where I was established and I was, I said, all right, I'm going to do this on my terms and I'm going to have fun with it. And that was when I played the best. I felt like, all right, this is who I am. I was comfortable with who I was. I wasn't trying to be someone, you know, I wasn't trying to score goals. I mean, obviously everyone likes scoring goals, but it wasn't my thing. And I was comfortable being a defensive defenseman, do my job and, and enjoy it. And that was probably the biggest thing. I think that probably goes back if I, to be honest, to my mother who used to bring me to, to play and said, did you have fun? Did you work hard? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, did you do what your coach asked? Classic you know, mom question. Well, no, they, yeah. these, the, you know, she didn't care if I had how many goals or what yeah. it was all the, and I say that to my kids now, you know, it's have fun, work hard, be a good teammate, listen to your coach, all these things that really, if you can check those boxes off, yeah. then you're going to be a better player for it. Yeah. You know? And, and that's, I think that was, she was always, my mother, you know, we get in the car and there was a lot of, I know the, the car ride parenting is, <laughs> is, you know, like you should have done this on the four check and why are you going here and put your stick over here? Because every you know, kid and, fears and that every ride. kid is going, <laughs> oh God. But I, I was fortunate that I had just the simple basic questions and then whether we won or lost, it was okay because we did all the right things. Sure. So, or we, I did the right, all the right things, I guess, but uh, um, I throw my mother in there with me. <laughs> was there, was there a point, I always wondered this too, is, was there a point when you were growing up playing the game that you, you went from like, oh, I'm just, I'm just having fun. I'm just like with my buddies and we're playing this game to, I, I might have a shot to, to 
<laughs> play at a really high level here. You know, I was you? I was pretty fortunate because I was ignorant, I guess. Um, I I just enjoy playing. So um, you know, I was recruited for football, and I like football. So at what for, at what at what age? Um, I, that was in high school. I was recruited, you know, to play college, um, but it was it was one of those things I had to decide between hockey and football, and I wanted to do both. And um, you know, I was I was lucky. I just had fun doing it. Yeah. So th at that point, I said, okay, I can make I can go to college and play, which is great, yeah. everyone's dream. But I was just focused on playing. Yeah. So that was it's just an extension of I get to play again. And a lot of kids didn't get to play again. I was just worried, okay, I get to play hockey now at Providence College. And I went for four years. I was going to be a math teacher. I was ready to do that. I was taking, uh, observing classrooms and doing all that stuff. And then, you know, I got a contract with the Bruins. And I said, okay, <laughs> math teacher. I'll, play, I'll play my AHL. <laughs> I get to play a couple of years. That'll be great. Yeah. You know, and so I signed that contract and ended up making the team. And I was just happy to happy to play you know uh, it was never a, it was never a you know like hey this is a job now yeah. um, you know and and I say that also remember I, I just told you I, I took me four or five years to actually be comfortable with what I was doing sure. I was still playing having fun doing my thing yeah. um, but it what you know and then eventually it became okay this is my job but I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna make sure I enjoy it. Yeah. And so that you kind of have to keep going through that cycle. This is your job, but I'm enjoying it, and it kind of goes back and forth. What you brought up that you were recruited to play football. I think a lot of kids, especially good athletes, um, go through that struggle where, like, you get to a certain point, and especially if you have conflicting seasons. Um, but how did you make that choice between football and hockey? I, I don't. Did a, did a coach ever say you gotta start? You gotta start. You know specifying your yeah 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 specializing is like the the biggest thing right yeah. it's like all right now you're full-time i i just didn't see it i couldn't do it um and i did play club i played at acevet right down the street and uh so um that was in the fall but i made that work around football you know we had, if we had a sunday off then i was playing hockey and um and i enjoyed that i i never once really did want to do the other thing yeah. so and she just ignored so, kind of the people that were saying specialized but yeah yeah I, I just I didn't see fun. the I didn't see the value in it it wasn't fun for me yeah and I thought about going to a private school to play at a private school and I don't know it didn't seem fun for me I didn't I wanted to be with my friends yeah. so I went to Neshoba Regional and public uh, public school yeah. division 14 I think we were <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I I just played and had fun and yeah. um, so I never, I never, I, I was fortunate in my ignorance that I never really chased it. I think my parents knew about it yeah. and, and maybe encouraged me, but never forced me to do anything. So nice. I thank them for that. Yeah. So we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about skate sharpening, um, being here at Sparks. Did you, uh, do you have any skate sharpening preferences or did you, did you have them as you were playing? Uh, consistency is my biggest problem. You know, it's, I want it this way all the time. So that was really all that mattered. I, I went from beginning of my career, I was at a half inch. I was 250 pounds, <laughs> 255 playing. And so Not ideal. I, I want, well, I, I needed to grind. That was when the game was big and strong and I needed to set an edge and, yeah. and lock up. I wasn't worried about getting up and down the ice as much. Sure. We played a trap under Pat Burns. So, um, you know that was my my big thing and then I as the game got faster I needed to get faster so I went up to a, you know a five eights tinkered with a three quarters and yeah. but I wanted it the same every time and that was my focus that yeah. was all I was worried about how often were you sharpening uh, I would sharpen for game days okay so I'd sharpen um, uh, before pregame skate and then I just Go that usually you'd have practice the next day. I wouldn't sharpen it for practice, and then I'd pregame skate. Cause so I'd have it. I'd be on the ice with that edge, just so I was comfortable with sure. it, and yeah. then I could play the game with it. Nice. Um, any funny or awkward? You know, we've all had them as players. Any funny or awkward like in-game sharpening uh, loopers? I I will say. Um, 
it was I was at Providence College. We were playing at UNH at Snively, Lively Snively Arena, and it used to be loud and crazy, like they were crazy fans. And I had this thing where I do right before the opening face off, if I was starting, I do three crossovers left, three cross crossovers right, and then shoot out from the goal line and go as hard as I can to the blue and then stop. So I got all fired up and I, I'm not sure how it happened, <laughs> but I went up full speed right to the blue line, went to stop and my skates just went right out from under me. And on the slick new ice at Snively, I did a torpedo right across the red line, all the way to the far blue line. I'm, I split the D uh, before the puck was even dropped and I nice. like, slowly got up and yeah. And the, the, of course, the cheers. Oh yeah, they were loving it. No, yeah, no. there was. Uh, and then the rest of the game, it was you know learn how to skate. You know, every time I go by, someone will be yelling at me. So, um, yeah, that was probably the the worst skate sharpening issue I ever had. Nice. How did you get the? Uh, that reminds me of your of your nickname. Uh, how did you How did you come up with that nickname? Um, was it Skillsy? Skillsy came from um, I believe it was Eric Sunquist. He'll like that. Um, mentioning him um, uh, a good friend of mine that at Providence College uh, we you know I, I had Gil three on my nameplate in my locker and he put skill zero <laughs> and so of course the Bauer rep was coming around and sizing us up for our skate our new skates yeah and I got new skates and they were delivered to Skillo because he just looked up and said that's <laughs> Skillo <Nice. laughs> and so then they started Skillo, and um, later on, uh, you know, I, I could have probably let it die, yeah. but I always took it as a as a challenge and something. You know, yeah. I have to work hard for everything. You know, I've sure. got zero skill, so um, I took it as a oxymoron, or I don't know what you grammatically what you call that, but yeah. I embraced it and and enjoyed it. Awesome. Um, if you could go, this is like our, our final, well, couple couple final questions, I think, and then Colleen has some funny ones for you. But um, if I always ask this to folks that have kind of achieved, you know, pretty amazing things. I mean, you won a Stanley Cup, and we all, a lot of us have kids now. Like, if you could go back and tell your, your, your 10 to 13 year old self something that you've learned either as an athlete or as a, or as a person, you know, to, to just like, hey, like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm your, I'm your 42 yeah, yeah, year yeah. old dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What 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 would you what would you tell yourself? Um, you know what? I people always say, you know, oh, I would do this. I I just think the whole enjoyment is not knowing. So I I know that's kind of maybe corny, and I'm skirting the issue. But yeah. I, what would you say? I, I I'd probably say, hey, have fun, enjoy it, because I think the beauty of growing up is that you don't. You don't know what's going to happen, and someone can tell you. You're still not going to believe them. Yeah. You know, like, you know, your father says, "Hey, you're not. You're hanging around with the wrong group. You know, yeah. you're not going to listen to them. You know, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you know, those are your buddies or whatever. You know, you kind of you go through your whole life and and uh, just ride the wave, I guess. Well, that was fantastic. Thanks so much for stopping by, Hal, to talk with us. Stay tuned for another edition of the Edge. Talk to you soon.